I have two gentlemen here with me. Uh, one who is globally well known as FCB's turnaround man. And second, who in his last interview told me that he'd love to be referred to as uh, the serial builder of agencies. Let me welcome uh, Tyler Turnbull, uh, CEO of FCB Global and uh, FCB India CEO Dheerat Sana. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You know, two big developments have happened uh, in India, Tyler, after your last visit. Uh, one is, of course, Thirat's appointment, and second is Swati's departure. Uh, I want to understand from you on hindsight, do you feel uh, that every CEO really needs to find his own partner to create that magic? And for FCB, it would have been sort of tough to recreate that Swati uh, Rohit magic again. Well, listen, let me just start by saying I am incredibly proud of the agency that Rohit and Swati and our entire team has built over the years. I mean, some of our most globally recognized work came yeah. from that team. Uh, but I also believe that change is a positive thing, especially in our business and in our industry. I think clients look for it, and I think creativity thrives on it. And so I could not be more excited that Duraj has chosen to join us. I think his first few months at FCB have been incredible. and. I know that he's going to build a phenomenal creative group and a phenomenal team who can keep up the legacy that I think Swati, Rohit, and many of our people created over that time. So, very excited and feeling very good. You know, uh, Dheeraj, uh, for you, I mean, uh, on one side, you obviously, brick by brick, built uh, Leo Burnett into a force to reckon with on the global stage. And Swati sort of carved that debut for FCB India uh, on, at the Cannes platform. and plastered it there year after year. Uh, now that you know she's not going to be around, you know, does her absence kind of put more pressure on you at this uh, this year at Cannes? And are you hopeful of a big victory again? So I think, as uh, Tyler said, uh, the work that uh, Rohit and Swati and the entire team, uh, the work they did for FCB, built a great pedestal mm -hmm. and a great platform for us. And a lot of that team, in fact. Uh, stays on and carries on the work, right? People like Nitin, Rakesh, Gaurav, uh, Yudhi and Ushila, and so on and so forth. So the last part of the team uh, that powered the leadership is, is still here, all right? Uh, as far as CAN is concerned, I never take CAN as a pressure. I feel CAN is a measurement of a great agency and a, and a great organization. And that's what we are focused on. I think all of us in our lives as individuals, and as organizations have won enough can, uh, not to worry about winning another 12 of them. Uh, so if we win, we are happy. Uh, if we don't win, it's fine. We are focused on building an organization, a creative culture, making our clients successful. That's what I'm truly focused on right now. So no pressure. But you have a great lineup waiting for you? We have a good lineup. I think a lot of uh, the can contenders this year are coming from the work which has happened. Uh, last year, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of more work uh, which is in the pipeline for this year. Uh, and Tara and I keep talking about we are never in a hurry uh, to meet a can deadline. Uh, we want to do things right. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to win big on our big brands. Uh, and uh, once that kicks in, uh, you will see that the organization, uh, the energy of the organization is kicking in, brands are kicking in, and glory is kicking in. I think it's one of the outcomes or measurements of how the organization is doing. It's not something that I want to engineer artificially. Susan Creedle, who I know you know, our global chair, has always said that you know, our focus needs to be doing our best work on our biggest brands. And over the last seven years, she's built up an incredible global creative council that I think has been focused on doing just that. So as Jiraj says that really is our first bar of success. The outcome and the recognition that that work may receive at Cannes or at other shows is always a cherry on top and a great benefit. Yes, but it's, it's our, our goal is never that. Our goal is to drive economic growth for the brands that we work with. And if the work is recognized as a result of that growth, we're, we're proud. And, and you know, talking about growth, I think FCB has managed to grow even during the peak of the pandemic, yes. if I remember correctly. Cut to 2023, a lot of agencies are struggling, uh, but even IPG for that matter has seen an organic uh, drop in uh, their growth, I think 0.1%. Uh, and FCB has managed to uh, see a 5% growth. Uh, so I have two questions. Uh, how much has India grown in that 2023 period? And what really is the secret ingredient that kind of helps you go against the tide? 
Well, first of all, we can't share specific numbers about India, but what I will share is that India for us has always been an incredible growth driver for FCB overall. The dynamic nature of the market here, of talent, of our clients, has been incredible. And I think that stability and that energy is something that we've seen in our results year in and year out, certainly in 2023. Getting to your second question, the overall growth of FCB and I think the ability that we've had to counter some of the industry trends as it relates to creative financial performance has really been built on this idea that we fundamentally believe that our product is our creativity and that that creativity needs to work in service of clients growing. And I think today across our industry, it can sometimes seem that creative is a variable within a wider mix a wider media machine, or rather a wider data or targeting kind of lens. But I think all of us who choose to work at FCB really believe that it starts with an incredible creative platform or idea, and how that then gets distributed and amplified through new technologies, new platforms, builds on it. But we have to always have that at the forefront, at the core, because attention has never been harder to get today. Uh, and you know that as a journalist, I think many of us do in the industry. And so having ideas that break through in compelling ways are more efficient and more effective. And I think more and more clients are coming to us around the world who believe the same thing. Another question on growth, I think I, um, not specifically growth, but I want to know how much does India contribute to the global revenue of uh, FCB at this point? Yes, again, I can't <laughs> unfortunately share too many details on that, but I would just say outside of North America, India is our biggest region. Uh, so it's of critical importance to the global health of FCB. And I think you can see that here with the group of agencies that we have from an India perspective. I mean, across FCB India and Interface, obviously Alco, where we are today, and, and Connect, we have such incredible teams that I think have all succeeded and are all growing in a very special way. And part of what Diraj and I spoke about when he decided to join us a few months ago was the potential for where we could take India from an FCB perspective. And I think the last time we spoke, I shared with you how much I believe in the country and the market, and I've never believed in it more than I have now. I think that it will become more and more important to FCB going forward, uh, not just within our local India market, but globally as well. You know, Deeraj, coming to you, and I, I remember reading one of your interviews where you mentioned that the world will be divided between people who will be rallying behind creativity and uh, humanity and those rallying behind data, technology and AI. Now, FCB has traditionally been, you know, inclined towards the former. Yeah. But now with you coming in, are we going yeah. to see a major change in track, you know, a more, more focus on data, numbers, yeah. that kind, digital. Yeah. I think there's obviously focus on data and tech and all of that, but we feel and I believe personally that all of that is to the service of creativity, right? And I think it's become so important now because there is a crazy mad chase for everything data or everything tech for the sake of it. Or there's this crazy mad chase to turn everything that creativity does into a machine and, and lots of output. Oh my God, where are my hundred social media posts? But how much of those 100 social media posts uh, are being liked or shared or doing any impact, right? So I believe that we have to get away from that mad rush. We have to go back to the core of the fact that creativity can solve business problems, right? Mm -hmm. And when I say creativity, I mean it more than just advertising and print and TV work. But creativity in its own way, right? It could be a product solution. It could be a mm -hmm. platform. It could be a campaign, a project to bring back something. Uh, right, and that true definition of creativity to solve client problems, I feel it was never more important uh, than in these times when there's such a crazy rush for ad tech and and mark tech and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the core uh, of our business, that's the core of the way we think at FCB. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, data, AI, is to the service of that. We have huge investments on data. In fact, we just launched the Indian Data COE, Center of Excellence, uh, with Kinect at the heart of it. Uh, we are making lots of investments in that, in terms of people, resources, access to data for everybody mm -hmm. in the group. So huge amount of investments on that, but all of it to mm -hmm. the service of creativity. Okay, interesting. And I'll be very uh, keen to find out what are the new areas that you kind of explore. Yeah. 
to tap all of this. Uh, uh, another thing I think um, IPG CEO spoke uh, recently about how the agency of record uh, trend has kind yeah. of uh, seen a downfall. I mean, a uh, lot of uh, clients are not really sustaining that kind of relationship with agencies anymore and that's seen uh, led to a decline in revenues overall. In contrast, I think FCB has had very long relationships, I think decade long, I think we, just, we were discussing you had a 60 year old yeah. relationship yes, our, with... I think our oldest relationship in the world happens to be here in India. Oh, oh okay. Our yes, oh. Very so, so that obviously is um, a big chunk of your revenues coming from yeah. there. But uh, with regard to new age clients, what, what, is, uh, what is the percentage uh, today? And are they mostly project based or a retainer? So it's a mix, right? I mean, uh, we have a huge exposure to clients uh, which are directly linked to India's growth economy, to India's consumption expenditure. So we are big on automotive sector, we are big on finance sector, we are big on CPG. Uh, which means that if India goes, we grow as well. And, and you can't go wrong with that story at this <laughs> point in time in India. And, and we are lucky that most of those relationships with India are, are AOR. They are long-term relationship based. Uh, we do projects, mm -hmm. uh, even with the new age clients such as Uber, for example, we have a long-standing relationship. They're not project-based relationships. Uh, at the same time, we are open to projects. We do a lot of projects for many clients. Right now, that's not a huge part of our revenue, mm -hmm. uh, but it will it will grow as a, as a share uh, to our overall buy. Certainly, I mean, when I look around the world, we have many agencies where, you know, 60, 70, 80 percent would be project based mm -hmm. business, and I don't see that as a bad thing. Yeah. I think that in many cases, a lot of our clients and a lot of our new business has shifted into projects versus pitches to start with. And I think that gives clients the ability and frankly us the ability to understand how our clients work, to understand whether we're going to be the right fit and then grow from there. And I think coming from a digital background like I do, projects were the norm, right? It wasn't kind of AOR status. And I think having a mix of model for us is the best way forward and to not have a one size fits all relationship. because. I think, look, many of our clients want different commercial models and different ways of working with us. Yeah. I think our focus has been really, how do we make sure that we are getting compensated for the value of what we drive to their business uh, and that our model matches the outcomes that they're trying to drive as well? You know, you, because you touched upon a healthy mix, uh, does it also make business uh, good business sense to kind of have a good balance between uh, you know, legacy clients and also new age clients and or do you think being legacy heavy can actually take uh, FCB into the future as well? See, I, I honestly never look at the market as legacy versus new age. Mm -hmm. I look at the market versus which is the client where we can make the maximum impact. Right? Where can we solve a problem? Where can we help creativity build economic multiplier, which is what our core is. Mm -hmm. So honestly, when I put a filter to what business you want to go after, we're not seeing it as legacy versus new age. We're seeing as where can we make the maximum impact, uh, really. And on, on projects, I feel that, I mean, what we've done well in my past life is project-based relationships. So mm -hmm. those are relationships as well, right? It's just that you come and you do a project and then you go away and you come back and do another project, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I call them relationships as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to build on that because I think that when I think about our best partners, our best CEOs and best mm -hmm. CMOs, I think about their mindset more as legacy or new aged. And I think the majority of the yeah. partners that we have have a very new aged mindset, which to me means that they want to disrupt the status quo. They have a challenger spirit within them, whether they're a 151 year old brand like FCB is, or they are a new startup that just started last week. And so that's the type of partner and mindset that we look for. And then I think we look at, okay, what is the reality of the brand? What's the DNA? and how do we drive that disruption that they want from there. Okay. Another aspect I want to touch upon is acquisitions. And FCB has not really big, been very big on acquisitions in India. Uh, I think uh, barring Kinect, of course, mm -hmm. uh, you try to build capabilities within, which is, I think FCB India was an in-house uh, brand yes. and you brought FCB 6, I mean, to India as well. Yeah. So how has that really worked out and what is the advantage of having uh, that kind of an approach? One of the things we like to say at FCB is we're truly local up versus global down. And I think what that operating model has allowed us to do around the world is experiment in different markets with different services, capabilities, perspectives, 
And when we see something working in a market, bring it to others. So FCB6 is a prime example of that, right? Uh, an agency and a brand that was started in my hometown of Toronto uh, and then expanded to you know, now eight markets around the world, uh, including most recently India. And I think within India, it's yeah. one of our fastest growing units by far in the last 12 months. What growing from within, I think, allowed us to do is we understand the proposition of the agency, the core capabilities, and the roadmap on how to scale and grow. And also, we know culturally exactly how to, the type of people that we're looking for to bring into that unit, the type of um, work that we want to create. And so, I think it's, it's been helpful to grow organically in that way. But obviously, when we see something that uh, could help our clients and our capabilities, we will acquire, and I think Connect is a prime yeah. example of that. Is, is something on the cards at this point? I mean, uh, which figure? Maybe AI into something in AI or gaming or e-commerce, something happening on those lines. Listen, we're always looking, I would say, and always interested in, in yeah. options out there. Yeah. Uh, but I think right now, at least from an India perspective, what I know Diraj is focused on is, is helping our clients, I think, have true end-to-end -end capabilities. I think most of our clients around the world now, and certainly in India, want to simplify their relationships with agencies. And I think they want an agency who is more accountable to delivering that growth across every aspect of their marketing ecosystem. And I think we're very well positioned now with our assets to do just that. Yeah, I think with uh, Kinect coming on board, I think I would say that we are the largest integrated credit company in the country. Uh, so we can go from very high in strategy uh, to mainline, to digital, to social, to CRM, right all the way down to production, right? and. Say about six years back or five years back, clients were excited mm -hmm. uh, of navigating <laughs> between 17 agencies. And they were like, oh my God, like, now I have a social agency, I have a sports agency, and I have a uh, CRM agency, and so on and so forth. And now when I'm meeting clients, they're like, can, can, you <laughs> yeah? can, you, can you give me one, 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 one leg to chill, right? right? right. Uh, so we are in, and, and, and that's where our power comes, right? Because we have the ability now in one PNL. Mm -hmm. to drive the full funnel, okay. right? And that to my mind is a lot uh, in terms of what we have at our hand right now. If we're able to accelerate this in a, in a good way, mm -hmm. uh, we have a good game going. You know, integration, I think FCB6 also was kind of brought in with the same kind of a yeah. thought. And I remember initially uh, the idea was to maybe tap into your existing clients for the first few quarters uh, and then kind of see how it goes. So today now, I think we are a year old. I mean, the agency is a year old in India now. Do you think it has independently created that cloud that you know you can do the pitches and you can get and yes. get on board, uh, get clients on board uh, yeah. independently yeah. without other agency support? Yeah. So both both is happening in India. Uh, if you look at our top seven, top ten clients, they are integrated through. So they are integrated. Which which of these? With uh, Connect and most. So so we say for Amul, we are doing work across Connect and and. Ulka and so on and so forth with mm -hmm. Tata Motors, we are doing work across brands. So most of our clients are, are integrated, right? Uh, on some clients, we went to media with IPG media brands. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Amul, we do everything, including uh, media, right? So the integration story is playing out well. And at the same time, uh, between Connect and FCB6, uh, they are winning huge mandates on their own as well. Uh, so both are fighting simultaneously. And also at a time when uh, agency margins are suffering across board, I think a beacon of hope sort of has been uh, production. Uh, a lot of uh, big networks have woken up to it. I think Ogilvy has, Publicis, or X agency, uh, Leo Burnett, I mean they had prodigies at that point. Uh, how soon will we see fuel content, which is something that you know FCB launched in 2018? Uh, kind of grow in scale and you know re really uh, contribute to a sizable revenue of uh, you know FCB in India. Yeah, look, I mean, I think globally from an FCB perspective, just for a moment, we uh, launched four, five, six studios, which is our kind of enterprise wide production solution of which Fuel in India is a part of. But I think one of the things that has made our production solution unique to some of our competitors out there has been we wanted to build the, a production solution that the world's best creatives love. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to that kind of machine mentality that we talked about earlier. I think we've seen a lot of content, high volume, high efficiency production solutions out there, but I would argue that many of those solutions are not creating great work. They're creating uh, work that we would say is invisible or ignorable. And so working with 
uh, Carrie Hill, who leads our production, who leads 456 globally, who has an incredible experience working with some of the top CCOs in the world, like Andreas and, and Susan and many others, we've been able to start to build something that has attracted amazing talent into the production mix, who understands how to work with great creatives to make that work thrive. Uh, and so from an India perspective, yeah. we certainly see it as an opportunity for growth, to your point, moving forward. But again, in service of the creative product, not as a separate standalone solution that's production only. My belief to fuel is I want it to be the best production house in the country, working with the best directors. I want our trade folks and our clients to have the best experience mm -hmm. uh, from fuel, not just because it's an uh, in-house production studio. So we will accelerate it in the right way, uh, you know, so that the experience is fantastic and the value that our clients get uh, mm -hmm. is the best, not just because it's a captive center. You know, you have, you, I think Kinect also had a production uh, yes, unit all, before you yeah, acquired it. All comes under fuel now. Okay. Okay. Now, Kinect is another agency which has been, which has steadfastly been gaining, uh, I think, uh, recognition worldwide. I think it's won a couple of CAN yes. awards last yeah. year as well. So, do you think today uh, Kinect is more popular on the world stage than the three FCB agencies? India, Interface and Ulka? I mean, do you think it's got that kind of a potential? And what are really your plans for Kinect in the coming year? Listen, let me just start by saying Rohan and Shandi, you know, the founders of Connect2, we obviously know incredibly well, I think are exceptionally talented. I think they are a big reason why we wanted to partner with them in the first place because they created something, I think, very innovative and very special. When I look at the recognition that Connect has been able to drive um, both locally and globally, what really excites me is that was done in collaboration with many of our other FCB agencies around the world. So if you take ChaiPad as an example, you know, that was done in partnership with FCB in Chicago, uh, as well as Connect. And I think that type of collaboration moving forward is going to be something that we continue. And as I said, it started with our Global Creative Council and what Susan had curated um, over the years on that front. And it's going to continue across our CEOs, our CSOs, and many other places. So. I think it's a very special brand, but I, I'm biased. I think all of our brands are quite special, uh, but I know we're going to have amazing work coming from Connect as well as Interface and Alka and India uh, in the months to come. Yeah. You know, all, all fundamentally very strong brands. I'm very proud of Connect and what we have uh, in terms of Connect, but in terms of all other brands, they're doing some amazing work uh, on their businesses. And when I look at the dashboard of growth, mm -hmm. they are all growing very, yes. very well. So the whole uh, growth that we've managed to build last year or this year first quarter is coming from all the brands and, and that's really the part of the group. Yeah, and I think Connect is one place where the leadership is sort of stable right now and yeah. I think across the other agencies there's a lot of movement that we are seeing. We just saw someone coming in from Leo Burnett uh, yeah. at FCB India yeah. and uh, I think FCB Ulka is obviously there is, is missing a CCO at this point so yeah. that still needs some work. Some parts, but I think largely, if you would ask me, I think the leadership is very, very stable. So Nitin, who has led Ulka all the while, is, is there with Ulka, and he's now helping me with the group as an executive director, shape of the the direction of the group. Kulvi is the CEO of Ulka. He's joined as as management trainee. He's now the CEO of Ulka. So huge amount of stability there. Within Ulka, we have very senior executive creative directors who've been with us for at least a decade each and they are powering the work on a day-to-day -day basis. The CCO is a gap in, temp in temporary time period and that's getting filled very, very soon. Uh, right? <laughs> Interface has got very strong uh, leadership, right? Rakesh being with us, again for the longest time, joined us as management training, part of the campus program, Star Wars program, is now the chief credit officer, so uh, you know he's in the okay. saddle. And Gaurav, uh, in fact, uh, you know, came here and joined the agency as a test case before I joined. So, so Gaurav has now been promoted to CEO for Interface, uh, right? So in that sense, the way I see it is very, very stable top leadership. Also, I want to know how you see something else. Uh, you know, I remember I asked you this question when you joined uh, FCB and I think it was too soon to answer that. Now you're six months into the job. What is that one USP of FCB and what is that one downside? Now you can answer this. <laughs> See, uh, I think the biggest thing which attracted me to FCB was this whole conversation that uh, in today's time when everybody is losing faith in creativity and learning to become a software company, here is one <laughs> company we are 
very very bullish on the power of creativity. Yes. Uh, like the conversation that I had with Tyler and Susan on creativity being the economic multiplier. And I be believe uh, very strongly in that whatever I've built in my past life was based on this principle of, of being creative at the core and then everything to the service of creativity. And I'm enjoying that piece, right? We are accelerating the FCB Group India positioning around that, investing heavily into creativity and everything else which has that come across. So to my mind, that's the very simple, very clear focus and the biggest advantage of this group. Also, which have been the big account wins in the past year and especially after you uh, took over? Yeah, so I think lots of them. So we were just doing a review and I think we've won about 20 plus uh, clients, uh, right, to a tune of two and a half million dollars plus uh, revenue. Uh, and some of the key clients would be Sketchers, DBS, mm -hmm. and many, many. And it's a huge uh, list which I can't give out some for various reasons. But the new business performance this quarter has been fantastic. Yeah. And so has been the organic growth. So I'm, I'm just, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, because that's one of the big focuses. And that's something I'm also learning a lot with FCB and with Tyler because we have strong brands here. And the fact that we're learning with current brands is a, is a big, big thing. Yeah. Okay. What, what is the expectation from Dheeraj at this point? Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned that you know India is the second biggest market for you across. How soon do you want him to make it the, him to make it the first? <laughs> well, listen, I mean, one of the things I think as an industry we haven't done well necessarily is give great leaders time to build. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is my 10th year at FCB. And I think over that time, I've been able to, with IPG's support, build great teams in markets around the world. And so, Diraj has time to build something very special and to continue the mom momentum that we have. And I think when I look at our growth rates now, when I look at the quarter that we've just had, we are exactly on track of what the trajectory that I can see us going on, uh, which is to, I think, solidify India's position even more in the importance to FCB globally and to create an abundance of great work that really helps us to prove the proposition that we have for so many of our clients around the world around the power of that creative. So I wouldn't say there's a, there's a, a deadline in my mind. Uh, I think for me it's just about making sure that we have examples of that momentum day in and day out and Diraj and his team have done just that. You know, I, I remember you were given the Herculean task of turning around one of FCB's worst performing markets. Yes. And you did it beautifully. I think uh, Rohit kind of proved that you know you can you know actually grab the awards and not part with it. Yes. <laughs> what is what do you think you want to be uh, known for at FCB? I think it's that I think uh, a couple of things. One is obviously we keep talking about our best work has to be in our biggest brands, mm -hmm. uh, right? And uh, growth for our clients and for the organization. And for the people who come here and do the best work of their lifetime. Okay. Yeah, those are the three things I would say. And also, Dheeraj, remember you were very excited about reporting to a global boss and uh, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, I, oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I hope you're still excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the best piece of advice that Tyler has given you in, this, in the past six months? And what is the most uh, difficult part about leading one of the uh, best performing markets? Uh, for FCB Group, I mean, what is the biggest challenge associated with that? So I think, I mean, the good thing is that Darren has peak very frequently. Uh, you know, sometimes I call to Crib, sometimes I call to Pretty Spray, uh, but I have time on his calendar all the time that I need it. Uh, and uh, he's a continuous conversation, continuous guidance, because I mean, I'm completely entering a new space here. So I call him very, very often. I mean, some of the things that uh, I'm learning, one is how do you grow organically? Right, because in my past life we grew a lot through new business acquisition. Here we have very very solid relationships. We have a full funnel, uh, you know, product to have. So just the amount of growth we can do, and we're already doing just to cross sell, upsell, doing more for our current clients. Uh, so that's the muscle I'm growing, uh, and that's a muscle which is uh, proving very well. Second is I think what Tyler always says that everything is a point in time, mm -hmm. right? And, and everything changes. Take your time, do it well. Uh, so. Unlike many other systems, there is no pressure, mm -hmm. uh, inordinate pressure, uh, to to engineer things in an unnatural way, and I like that. Also, one last question to both of you. Uh, you know, just like Tyler has Susan on the global level, who are we going to see as your partner in FCB India? I mean, 
uh, yeah. who's going to join you as a CCO, group CCO in India? Structure in India, we have four agencies uh, and four brands. Uh, and the structure is we have four CEOs, each CEO, there's a CEO for each of the brand and the CCO for each of the brands. Uh, and that allows us to, you know, have so many clients across each of the brands. It also allows us to have peak level talent in each of these brands and we can focus uh, mm -hmm. because as an agency and they're working on say eight ten brands together we can focus and give time to our brands uh, in a good way uh, and that's the structure going forward so there will be four ceos and four ceos and will there be a group cco i'm not sure about that right now <laughs> okay we hope to hear about that you'll soon. be the first to know <laughs> we have that on record <laughs> Super. Thank you so much for a very candid chat. Thank and yeah, wishing you all the success thank at Cannes and more. Well, thank you so much.